Hello! So in this video I'm going to teach you how to create a behavior rating scale form using Google Drive and uh, then I'll create a second video explaining how to um, send out the link to that automatically every day at a specific time so you can totally automate your behavior data collection. It's great. Um, so the first step is obviously to create the behavior rating form in Google Drive. So you can see I've got Google Drive pulled up right here. Um, so the first step is I'm going to create a form that we can edit and use to collect our behavior data. So the first step is to go over here and click New. And then a bunch of different options will come up. Google Forms, which is what we're going to use, is actually underneath this More caret. So you're going to slide on down to more and then this thing over here will slide out and show you Google Forms. So go ahead and click Google Forms and that'll open up a new form right here which we can use to create our rating scale. So the first step is that we are going to name the form. So um, let's say this is for a student named Phineas. So we'll say Phineas Behavior Rating Sheet. All right, so uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with this in terms of customization. So you can like come up here and you can change the color. We'll go with green, um, but you can edit all kinds of stuff. So I'll show you just the important basics and you can play around with the other things later. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go down here to the questions. It always comes up with this one untitled question to start out with. So we'll click on that and it'll pull up the question so that we can change it around. So um, there are lots of different types of questions and you can get to all of them using this little drop down menu right here. Um, the first most important thing that we're gonna probably want for our rating scale is we want to know what day the rating was for. So we'll type today's date. And obviously multiple choice is not going to do it for us. So we'll click multiple choice. We'll get this drop down, all the different types of questions that we can get. Uh, so we want a date. So there's an option for that. It's pretty simple. So you'll click that. And uh, now it'll have this little date picker. You won't be able to use the date picker on this screen, but when you actually go to the real form, uh, there will be a date picker right here. Um, we do want to require this, so you see this little toggle down here that says require. We'll turn that on so that it's a required question. Um, also, we want to make sure that we're as clear as possible with this because we don't want the date that they're completing the rating scale. We want the date that they're actually rating the student for. Um, ideally, it would be the same day, but you know, sometimes people get behind. So we want to make sure that they know we mean the day that the rating is for. So we're going to click on this little uh, dot 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 sort of an icon here. This usually means that there's more things that you can do. So we'll click that and there'll be a couple different things. Uh, we'll say that we want hint text. That'll let us type in a hint uh, to give the rater some more information. So we'll uh, type in our hint here. What day is this rating for? So now they know that we mean which day was the student actually rated. All right, so we've made it a required question. We've got our question all entered in. It's time to add another question in. So the way to do that is you're gonna come over here and click this little button. These will all kind of pop out descriptions of what they do. So we'll click the add question and it'll pop up and it'll default once again to multiple choice. Um, so next, what we're gonna to wanna to know is what class the rating is for. So we'll go ahead and type that in. What class period? this rating for all right so you could use a multiple choice box here uh, that would totally be an appropriate thing to do however I tend to find that teachers like to fill these out if they're shorter so a way to make this look shorter is instead of using multiple choice I would use a drop down because that way it just fills up less of the screen um, you can experiment with all of these different choices on your own to figure out which one's gonna work best but for this one I'm gonna use a drop down so we'll type in language arts math science and social studies just to give us some stuff to work with there. Um, all right, this is another one that we definitely want to make required. Um, and I don't think hint text would help on this one, so we won't add it. So let's add another question. Uh, now we're gonna get into actually rating the behaviors, I think. So uh, we'll look at what our target skills are. So target skill number one, uh, let's say for this student that it is um, staying on task. So time on task. Um, the best option I have found for a lot of these ratings is to use this linear scale. It'll give you kind of on a scale of one to 10 or one to five and you can set whatever you want, right? So um, 
So some hint text would probably be helpful here. And we'll give them the hint of how many times did Phineas need to be reminded to stay on task today? All right, so now we can set whatever we want as far as the number of options here. Um, we'll say definitely starting at zero because, you know, hopefully he will have zero reminders eventually. And five is actually a pretty good um, upper limit. So we'll say that, that we can also label our thing. So we can say that zero is great. And we can say that five is needs work just to let the teachers remember. Um, so something you might notice is if we've got a scale from 0 to 5, what do you do if he needs 6 or 7 or 8 reminders? This is something that hint text can be helpful for. So we'll put in parentheses, rate anything above 5 as 5, right? So there we go. Uh, we want to have this one definitely be required as well. So a lot of our ratings are going to look like this. So since we know the next question is going to look almost the same as this, we can click this little button down here to duplicate our question. We can also click this garbage can one to delete it, but we do want it. So we'll duplicate it. Uh, so we'll change this one to target skill number two, which we'll say is um, calling out. Um, so this one would be like kind of more of a negative behavior. Um, how many times did Phineas call out in class today? Rate anything above five is five is still good. And yeah, zero is still great. Five is, you know, five plus is still needs work. So we'll do that. And because the last question was required, this question's also required. Okay. So at this point, um, that's, you know, two target skills. That's probably a pretty full thing. We can come up here and we can preview what this is going to look like for people who are uh, filling this form out. So we'll click this little I button up here. And so here's what it'll look like. You'll notice that it's, you know, still got the same color scheme, but now this date picker thing here actually works. I can go ahead and select today. I can also select a class period and say, you know, science class. Um, you can see that these things will also work as well. Um, and if I were to try to submit it, like these asterisks mean that um, it's a required question. So looking pretty good so far. We'll pop out of this demo by exiting out of that tab. We'll come back to our editor over here. All right. So one other question that might be helpful to someone as they're doing this is... Um, just giving them a place where they can insert more comments if they want. So we'll add another question. So here's our new question, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to type additional comments. All right. So um, multiple choice is not going to do it for an additional comment section. So we'll click this. And uh, for these, these short answer and paragraph are going to be our best choice. Uh, short answers for something really short. So something like a phone number or an email address. Um, but a paragraph is probably going to be our better option. Uh, we don't want it to be too long, but there is a trick to prevent that. So we'll go ahead and click paragraph. And we can see that now there's a spot for them to put in uh, a longer bit of text. Um, we're not going to make this a required question because it's just extra, so we'll leave this toggle off for now. Um, to make sure that we're not having to sift through this like whole giant essay that the teacher wrote about how frustrated they are with Phineas today, um, we're going to come over here to these dot dot dots again. We're going to click on them, and uh, we're going to go down here to da data validation. So data validation is basically just letting us be selective about what type of information we're going to accept, and uh, we do want text. Uh, we don't want a regular expression. Uh, we just want text. And we're going to set a maximum character count on it. We're going to say that we want no more than 200 characters. So um, that's plenty of time uh, or of length for people to get out some additional comments. And it'll even let you put in your own error text here. We'll just type in too long for the purposes of the demonstration. And um, that will pretty much do it for that question. So now when we pop back over here to our preview, um, we can see here's our additional comments box and they can type in whatever they want. And I'll just keep this going so you can see what happens if they try to type in more than 200 characters. You'll see that it'll pop up and say too long and uh, they'll have to scale it back a little bit.
Um, so now I'll exit out of this, go back to our editor. Um, this looks good for a sample. You can experiment with the other types of questions if you want. Another thing that I want to cover is if you accidentally get your things out of order, you can take this little grabber right here and move the order of the questions around. Um, I liked the order we had it in originally though, so we'll just leave it like that. Um, and then we want to send this sheet out to people. So in order to send the sheet out, we're going to go up to this send button up here and we're going to click it. Um, so you'll have lots of different options here. Uh, the first thing is it'll ask you who can respond to this survey. Uh, you can set it to anyone in your organization or anyone at all. So that'll open it up to the public. Um, we're going to want just anyone in our organization here. Um, we can also set it to automatically collect people in our organization's username. So if uh, your county uses Google as their provider for email and stuff, it'll just automatically grab their email address as part of that, which is great. So we're going to click it. Um, this next option is people can only respond one time. So that's helpful for voting, but not really for what we're using this for. It'll also ask how you want to send out the form. So at this point, you can send it out as an email, put in people's email address right here, and then put in the subject line of the email what you want the message to be, and then you can say that you want to include the form right in the email. Um, another way that you can do is you can click on this link button right here, and that'll grab you a hyperlink that you can send to people, and then when they click the link, it'll bring them right to this form. Um, like I said, teachers prefer things to be shorter, uh, so I'll click this shorten thing, and then it'll make the, the link a lot shorter, which is kind of nicer. The last thing you can do is you can embed the form in a website. That probably won't be helpful for us, so we'll just stick to this link. So at this point, you can copy this link by clicking the copy button right there, and then if if you were to pop over into a new tab, I'll just go in here and then I will paste in the link to my form, hit enter, and it'll bring us right to the sheet that we had created. And this is the real deal, the one that people can fill out. Um, you'll notice that down here it also has a option for them to send themselves a copy of the responses and for them to click submit. Um, so that's basically how that works. Um, so next I kind of wanted to show you a... Um, what the responses look like. So I've created a second demo form. Uh, so this is very similar to the one that I just showed. But now we're going to go over here to where it says responses. We'll click that. And here are is just a brief summary of the responses. So there are some graphs, but not ones that are as cool as we can come up with ourselves. So uh, we'll come up over here. You can toggle whether the form is accepting responses right here, which is kind of nice. If you are done gathering your data, you can turn that off. But if you want to keep the form, you can do that. Um, the button that's going to most interest you though I bet is this button right here where it says create spreadsheet. So if you want to export this data into a spreadsheet that you can use in Google Forms or you know download and convert to Excel, you click that and it'll say what do you want to do? Do you want to create a new spreadsheet or select an existing spreadsheet? I recommend just creating a new spreadsheet and it'll uh, automatically default to naming it demo form which is the name of this form and then it'll put parentheses and responses. So we'll click create and then it'll pop us right over to that document and you can see uh, here it is in spreadsheet form. So the first thing you'll notice is that it collects the timestamp that the form was submitted um, and that is helpful because you can see the date over here and you can make sure that people are filling them out on the day that they're rating because that improves the quality of the data. So if you notice that people are doing what I did right here and saying that they completed the form on the 8th, but really they're completing it on the 10th, you can maybe have a chat with them about that. Um, but also it will collect their username. And here is the data that we got, the dates from the first question, the subject from the second question, the target skill number one from the third question, here's the fourth question, and then here are the additional comments that people uh, have filled out. So um, that is basically it. That's how you use this program to get uh, forms and collect behavior data. I'm going to make a sequel to this where I explain now that we've got that form how to get it to automatically send out to your teachers every day that is complicated enough to the point where it warrants its own video. But um, anyways, I hope this was helpful and good luck.